Welcome everybody to RDA Tech Q&A. You've got questions, we've got guesses where we answer your technical issues here. Stuff you might want to know about, stuff's broken. We can poke at it. We'll poke your stuff. Not in a not in a Donald Trump kind of way though. We won't do no, that. No. Um, I'm Nash. I do Radio Dead Air. I have well over a decade's worth of experience with IT. With me as always, my producer, Mike Gearman. He has a similar amount of sorts of experiences and stuff. Especially Hello. in the last 24 hours. Yeah, Mike, why don't you tell us what happened? Oh, this wonderful thing which we call Windows. Well, so this story starts with me wanting to punch someone at Microsoft in the dick. Not in the Donald Trump way either. I want to punch him in the dick. We're, we're just all about the genitals this week. And the reason for this is because they have something called the anniversary update. Uh, the Windows 10 my, anniversary update, yes. Which I told my computer not to apply, but it went ahead and applied it anyway. Now, if it had just applied the anniversary update, that would be okay. Because I would go, oh, it has screwed up my computer. I have a black screen. I will boot into safe mode and roll this back. I could get into safe mode, by the way. Everything worked in safe mode, more or less. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't roll anything back. Because all of your restore points... Had been deleted. All of your restore points! Because Anniversary Update turns them off. It doesn't just turn them off. It apparently deletes the old ones you had. Because if it just turned them off, they would still, in theory, be out there. You are not the only person I've heard of having problems with Windows 10 Anniversary Update. Lots of uh, Twitch streamers have been reporting they've been having issues with it, too. Mainly, uh, Windows 10 Anniversary Update also introduces a lot of little incompatibilities and glitches. That with various, various things. Yeah. They, they, they may, I can already see your camera is, the refresh rate is, you're like 30, you're under 30 frames per second, I can already tell. Interesting. Okay, well, I have to, right now I'm just going with the Skype drivers. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to get the uh, Logitech drivers for this damn thing and get them reinstalled. I'm still reinstalling stuff. Yeah. It's funny though, it looks like you're, you're in like kind of a little bit of a strobe effect. Like in the 90s when they cut out every three frames to make something look cool and, and, and you know, extreme. Let me see if it's something I can change in my settings here. Uh, advanced settings. It says NTSC 60 hertz. That's not, well that's not a uh, frame That's anti-flicker, that's anti-flicker. Yeah. Device info. Um, hell if I know. Hell if I know! Yay! So it's going to be Logitech drivers after this, which I thought I had already, but apparently it didn't. I did. I said, oh, let's see if Skype works, and it does sort of. Yeah, uh, folks out there, if you haven't yet to install the Windows 10 anniversary update... Don't. Give it a little bit. Because here's here's what's, what, what's the big problem is. Microsoft, um has tested this for the average internet user. That is the people who use, you know, maybe internet and they game a little bit and that's it. They're not they're not talking about the the power users, the people who might have different peripherals or even folks with webcams because I've heard of lots of trouble with this update and webcams. Um you might want to hold off. What they they're going stuff's going to get patched in or Individual uh, hardware manufacturers and software makers will come up with fixes for it. But pretty much Microsoft and this, these updates, it's just been... Boom! Surprise! You gotta deal with this shit now! This is not our problem! Yay! Yeah. Exactly. And, exactly, Grady. And, That's what I just and said. And it doesn't just do that. They also turn off certain things that you may have wanted on. And I'm not just talking your restore settings, which it screws with. Hmm. It also turns off various tablet and pen settings mm -hmm. or alters them and you can't change them back. Mm -hmm. It changes certain download settings for updates that unless you are Enterprise Edition, you can't change. Or unless you go in and do a bunch of various registry hacks and other sorts of bullshit. Which, who knows how long those, those will last. Until the next update. Exactly. Yeah. I know. To say frustrating as hell. 
So yeah, that's our, our first little tip out there to you. You might want to hold off on the anniversary update, but the next bit, the, the, the big thing we're going to be covering, we've got two stories this week because the first one is just going to take so fucking long. Samsung. Which, I'll tell you what, Samsung is so happy with Donald Trump right now. Because, because had, yeah. Had and, Donald... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you go. Oh, you go. Okay. Uh, Donald Trump, as we all know, if you've been paying any of the slightest bit of attention to the news, has been a flaming dickwad all week. Yep. And he has just consumed the entire news cycle. Yes, which has taken attention away from other things that have been flaming. Yes. Galaxy Note 7. Yeah, had Donald Trump not been devouring the airwaves this week, this would have been, I guarantee, one of the top stories around the nation. Um, what happened was, for those of you just now catching up to us, Samsung's Galaxy Note 7, their premier top-of-the-line uh, smartphone, had started bursting into flame. There yes. was some issue that could not be quantified. Well, they, they, know, they know what it is now. Oh, they, they claim they know what it is. They claim well, they, they knew they, what it was they last time. They, they know what it is for the original batteries. They don't know what it is for the replacement well, batteries. let me get there. Let me get there. I'm getting there. I'm building it up, man. Don't just jump to the fucking end. We, we don't practice. It's like when, it, when someone's telling a joke, do you, they're like halfway through. Do you just blurt out the punchline? Come on, a little showmanship. We're building this up. It depends on how bad the joke is. <laughs> so, for whatever reason, Samsung Galaxy Note 7 started bursting into flame. This appeared to be some sort of issue with the battery manufacturer and the makeup of it. And Samsung said, okay, okay, we're issuing a recall. If you have a Galaxy Note 7, send it on back to us. Take it into your local store. We'll either uh, give you a credit for a different phone or we'll replace the new one. Or we'll fix your old one and boom. So they did. And then the repaired one started exploding. Yeah. Um, and we have, there's a list on the article we're looking at. Of yeah. Things. Now, one of them stands out to me. Which one? Uh, I, the, the one where they, they, a safe Note 7 filled a Kentucky bedroom with smoke at 4 a.m., sending the owner to the hospital after he started vomiting a lot of black stuff. Quote, a lot of black stuff. Now, I, I have not been in very many fires <laughs> or inhaled significant amounts of toxic smoke. Coughing up stuff, I would absolutely see. No problem. Vomiting black stuff, that's unusual, and I I'm not sure it's connected as much as triggered. Uh, well, another one, you mentioned that one. There's another one, and this was kind of the one that kind of made the biggest headlines. One of the repaired Galaxy Note 7s that caught fire was on a Southwest Airlines flight. Had to cause an evacuation of an airplane to the point that as of today, the airlines issued an advisory. You cannot fly with a Galaxy Note 7. It's considered an explosive device. Yep, none allowed. Not the, carry on, not checked, nothing. The airlines consider this phone to be a bomb. Just let that sink in. That is incredibly bad for any hardware manufacturer. But when such attention, this is this is Samsung. Samsung's name has started to become synonymous with Android. Samsung is pretty much the premier Android handset manufacturer. Yes, yes, there are more than just Samsung, but Samsung and, and, and Note. The Note was one of their flagship lines. The Edge being the other one. Right. And I will note. I note not not intended. Ah, ah, ah. Mine's an Edge. Hmm. No fire, no fire issues here. The, the hottest this thing has gotten is when I accidentally stacked some stuff up on top of it and while it was running some video, and it got really warm. But that's to be expected. But we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, the, the other thing, the, what the story you were talking about, the, the Kentucky uh, one, the bedroom. Yes. 
this is the one that that made my oh jesus christ um Reading from the article from ours, the Kentucky case is probably the worst. The phone caught fire October 4th, and the owner contacted Samsung, but the public didn't hear about it until October 8th. The owner told CBS affiliate WKYT that he felt Samsung was helping him until he mistakenly received the following text from a Samsung representative. This is what a Samsung rep accidentally texted to the guy whose phone had caught on fire and he was vomiting black stuff after yes. the fire. Listen to this. Quote, just now got this. I can try and slow him down if we think it will matter, or we could just let him do what he keeps threatening to do and see if he does it. And ladies and gentlemen, not only is this bad PR to say, hey, let's, uh, let's see if there's anything here or if he's going to follow through with the lawsuit, but also it's another example of Reply all is not your friend. Reply all is so not your friend. <laughs> now, with, with texting, it's a little trickier, but you can still take numbers out of a reply all text. If you can't, then your, then your texting software is shit. I actually kind of find it hilar hilarious that the people who make the fucking phones can't work their own texting software. Well, to be uh, fair... We don't know whether the person who texted that was using a Samsung phone. That's true. That's we, true. We, 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 we would suspect that. I mean, I would think that if I were a Samsung employee and I walked in with an iPhone, they would throw rocks at me. Probably, yes. Likely. But uh, here's the... All right. To return these phones by mail, just to make the, the optics on this even worse, Samsung has provided special... Fireproof boxes. I've heard them called ceramic coffins. They're not allowed to be shipped by air. They can only be shipped by UPS ground. You can't, fl they, they, they will not allow these things on an airplane. They're that fucking dangerous. I, I kind of want one of the ceramic coffins just as a, a conversation piece <laughs> or as a, as a, this, I don't, I never had the phone. But I got the box because I want to see what the box. Look, I, I want to see what, what we got going on here. <laughs> well, it's uh, all right now. Now let, let's let's bring all of this together. This story we just talked about with with the customer service representative, um, the 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 fireproof boxes, and another story I read on ours about why they had a recall on their recall. Apparently, Samsung's their their testing team. No one was allowed to put anything electronic to write down anything electronically. So they weren't coordinating via email. And the reason why was they did not want to leave a paper trail in case of a lawsuit. Okay, so here, here's my thought on that. If if you're in the point where we're going, we don't want to have a paper trail in case of a lawsuit, you're already too far down the wrong path. Yeah. That's the kind of thing we expect from, I don't know, uh, mafia. We don't want to leave the paper trail. The, the Trump organization. Oh, wait, I said mafia already. Um, <laughs> spy. Oh, wait, I said the uh, Trump already. Um, no, it's it's this just looks so bad because when oh, you it does. this, this is the kind of thing that tarnishes a brand with consumer minds just across the board. And the. Now, if the initial thing had happened and they cleaned it up right away and the second set of batteries hadn't started catching stuff on fire, they probably would have been okay. Right. Not spectacular, but okay. It's the fact that the second set. Yep. Yep. Because what I understand, what, May, what I understand about the first set of batteries, the original batteries in these things, they were just slightly too big for to fit in there. So they were forced a little bit, which caused the corners of the batteries to get crimped very, very slightly, which caused battery plates to touch. And when, when you're talking about a uh, lithium ion battery, there's an anode and a cathode, it's separated. And a thing about a lithium ion batteries is the, the, the mixture inside them is by its nature, uh, I forget the exact term of it, but it is flammable. It's an organic compound 
to allow you know the, the lithium ion and the, well flammable is a good term yeah it's flam it's highly flammable it's also under pressure it's encased in a sealed com container and the heat the heat builds up and it's got to go somewhere so even that little bit of crimping that mike's talking about even just a little bit when, when those connect th those those separations get blurred well yeah now so they said oh now this wasn't caught apparently during assembly uh, either because i don't my guess is it's a you know automated assembly line mm -hmm. and so whatever was going you know phone in one mechanical hand battery in another mechanical hand and pushing them together didn't have any co it said push snap mm -hmm. and it was just you know had enough pressure on it to go yeah that fits and no one there going that seems like it's pressing a little hard maybe maybe it wasn't pressing a little hard but it was just it was just too big you know it's like, and we're not talking like inch you know, a quarter inch we're talking you know like millimeters yeah or less less and so that's what happened with the first set of batteries the second set of batteries they still don't know why or, or if they do know why they haven't said yeah, it's the second set. It's from a completely different uh, distributor, completely different uh, battery provider. So, it's... Now, if I were if I were a conspiracy theorist, I would ask: Is that second battery supplier owned by Apple? <laughs> but it's probably not. Well, no. But you say that. All right. Here's an example. I walked. Uh, we were out. I was out with uh, Phelan and uh, Allison the other day. We, we were going to get lunch, and we walked by a Verizon store. And there's an advertisement in the window for the Galaxy Edge 7. And the first thing Phelan did was looked in the window and goes, why are they advertising the ones that explode? Because he didn't know the difference. He doesn't know the difference between a Galaxy Note 7 and a Galaxy Edge 7. And what's the other? The Galaxy S7? Yeah. There, there are three of them under the Galaxy brand, but the names are so similar that people are have it in their mind Galaxy 7 Kablooey. Yeah. The general public does not follow this stuff as, you know, they're not big tech heads. They don't follow every single model. They know an iPhone 6. They know kind of know an iPhone 6S. They, they kind of know that. But if you start telling people that the iPhone 6 was exploding, people would be leery of the iPhone 6S as well. And that's what's happening yeah. here with, with the, the Galaxy uh, 7 Line. I'm told I'm uh, seeing in the channel it's the S7 Active is maybe the third model, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I, it, I wanted the Edge when I went in to get mine, um, because that was the the when I got mine, uh, the stories about the uh, Seven Note burning were already out there. So it's like ah, I'm not going to get that. Yeah, it's it, it's Samsung is offering customers who return their Note Seven either a one hundred dollar credit. In addition to the refund on a new Galaxy on a new Samsung phone, or a twenty-five dollar credit on any other brand of phone, in addition to the refund, which which will keep a lot of people. They'll look at that extra seventy-five dollars and they'll go, "I can get a pretty decent phone." Maybe, or people will look at stuff like the One Plus Three or the Nexus Five or the Pixel, which is very just coming out right now. It's in the same ballpark as the Galaxy Note because the Note was their premier high-end yeah. phone. I think we're going to see a lot of, of switching over. And that's the other problem with offering people a credit on another phone. The Note was already their top-end phone. So if you give them $100 credit toward a new Samsung phone, what are they going to get? The Edge is already cheaper than the Note. Maybe a bunch of accessories. Maybe, but it you know it's still it's people are gonna. I think the Galaxy brand has been very damaged by this. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and you know, it'll be interesting to see how they come out with you know a year from now. Do they rebrand it, come up with a different name for what would be the Galaxy Eight, or do they say, okay, we'll try Galaxy Eight and pray to God nothing happens with the battery system? I think what one of the things we'll see is a well we would probably won't see the heads rolling in their qa department over the batteries no no uh we might hear about a vp being fired or something like that but that that'd be the, the most we hear um but i think they'll have a lot more in-depth testing 
of their batteries mm. in the next cycle. Also, they're going to have to do something, and this is already becoming a, tr a problem with the smartphones across the board. They're going to have to do something to wow people. And I don't know yeah. what that could possibly be. Yeah, because it's all in incremental upgrades right now. Yeah, we we've hit the point where you jam just about everything you could possibly jam into a smartphone, especially a high-end smartphone. I don't know what they're going to add to it that's going to be, you know, that jaw-dropping. And it's like you said, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's just, uh, had there not been that second recall, like you said, had there not been that second recall, people would have, have run, would have let it slide. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. It wouldn't have been great, but people would have been, okay, shit happens. I mean, look at Boeing. Boeing had whole fucking planes potentially catching on fire and people well, let that slide. Yeah. And who was it? Um. Oh, it was the Russians. Sorry, it was the Russians who it seemed like every three months had a had a plane falling out of the sky and landing <laughs> in a third world marketplace. <laughs> but it was Russian national planes. You're not going to you're sitting there not going, well, we, we're not going to fly them. No one is flying them. It's the Russian army. But, you know, on top of this, you know, there, there are there, right now there are Samsung washing machines exploding. There are. Oh, uh, there are. Yes. Okay, see, now you've made me concerned about the washing machine I have downstairs because <laughs> it's literally like right below my room. Do you have a Samsung washing machine? I don't know what the brand on it is. <laughs> I'll be honest. It's a front-loading washing machine. It washes my clothes. I haven't paid attention to I think that the branding on it. I pay attention to the settings. You know, beep, 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 punch <laughs> a few buttons, load in soap, load in la dirty laundry. It makes clean laundry. So, I could care less about the brand until now. But right now we have the Samsung phones and Samsung washing machines fucking exploding. I mean, this this is one of the this is not a good time to be a Samsung. And already, I, if you had any experience with Samsung, like my fucking television, which they've actually removed features from the smart TV. Which has made it less useful and less attractive. Samsung's brand has taken a beating right now. And Google is aggressively moving. Even though I've looked at the Pixel, I cannot justify the Pixel for the cost of, of the Google Pixel compared okay. to the Nexus. Yeah. And you, you made me so concerned to actually look up the Samsung washing machine. It's top-loading washing machines. Mine's a front-loading washing machine. Okay, you're fine. So even if it's Samsung, right now it's okay. We'll see what happens. I think it's Maytag. Now that I think about it, I think it's Maytag. But Google's Pixel um, also premiered just recently. And yeah, it's decent phone. Not a decent price, though. $650. In comparison, for my Nexus 5, I spent $350. Well, you know, $625 with your Samsung discount. <laughs> That's a good point. But still, it it's it's one of those things where Google might try to take Samsung's spot. And they may, especially with all this stuff about the Note, this might be perfect time for, for Google to capitalize on, on being a high-end Android phone. Um But th this this is one this is one that could that could kill the brand. I, I think the Galaxy brand is going to silently be retired before the next iteration of the uh, of the Galaxy comes out. But if you're currently, and, and this is directly from Samsung, this is not just me saying this, if you currently have a Galaxy Note 7, this is the word of Samsung, stop using it immediately. You're supposed to turn it off and take it to a store or, or put it in one of the re return boxes they get personally, but Stop using it immediately. That's never anything a company ever wants to have to put out there. Stop using this product immediately. Customers remember that. Uh, what are you doing? Hi. Hello. What are you doing? You just gonna sit over there and stare at me? Okay. Now... Not to take up the entire night with Samsung, we do have another story. Yep. Um, kind of a big deal, too. And this is one that's actually making uh, Verizon a little nervous. Um, so 
it came to light that uh, in 2015, now I want to put this out, this is in 2015, this was years after the Snowden revelations, this was years after that secret room in AT&T's uh, switching building in, uh, what was it, San Francisco? I believe so, yes. Yeah, this was years after this. 2015, it's come to light, Yahoo has been scanning everyone's email. All Yahoo users email at the behest of the government. So they have been looking in at everything. There's now um, lawmakers want to drag Yahoo into Congress. Um, they want to be briefed as soon as possible by the Obama administration. Um, let's see. Custom software was installed to search messages to hundreds of millions of accounts under an order issued by the Secretive Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Uh, Congress was not briefed on this. Um, that's not good. No, that's not good. Uh, three former Yahoo employees told Reuters the court-ordered search was done by a module buried deep near the core of the company's email server operation system, far below where email sorting was handled. This was some deep-level shit. Oh, damn. As if Yahoo did not need any more bad news. Because already they'd had a hack that they'd had to report. And that made Verizon a bit skittish about the whole buying, buying out them. Yahoo. This on top of it. Verizon. All right. When a company wants to buy a company. It has to look toward that company's liabilities to take on. And whether the deal will be good in the long term, those liabilities could, in fact, make the deal worth much less, make what they pay for it much less, because then once Verizon buys Yahoo, they'll be responsible for all this shit. They'll be responsible for having to pay out any lawsuits. They'll be responsible for having to make any damages, restitutions, government fines, any of that sort of stuff. This could potentially be a deal killer. Very likely. And Yahoo very much needed that deal. Because they run out of money. Oh, yeah, they run out of money because their CEO... Duh. For those of you who haven't been around the past few years, here's what Yahoo CEO did. I'm going to buy this. 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 Do, do you even know what that stuff does? No, I'm going to buy this. She bought up all of these technology companies, including stuff like Tumblr, just in the idea, hey, let's buy it all, bring it all together, and suddenly money will appear. All of these disparate different internet companies and startups doing all their different stuff. And they, they thought they would incorporate it all into Yahoo and suddenly magically profit. That didn't happen. All tons and tons and tons of these properties that were purchased by Yahoo cost the company money. They did not turn up with. Go ahead. I'm saying yes. They didn't turn a profit on any of them. No, they were they were they're buying things as far as those on the outside could see just to buy things. Yeah, it's like buying. It's like a company, say, bought the Staples Center in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and then said, yeah, but we're not going to put on any sports or music there. We just bought it because we wanted it. But how does that make a profit? I don't know. And is, wasn't this how the dot-com crash happened? Yep, yeah, Pat, kind of. Yeah, sort of. Not really, but the dot-com crash was investors investing in everything internet because internet, without really looking at what they were investing in. This is one company buying up startups without looking at what the startups did. That's not a real big across-the-board crash, but it's not good for that one particular company. Yahoo. 
Tumblr was a perfect example. Yahoo wanted to get into the social uh, network game. They bought up Tumblr, and they had no fucking idea what to do with it. Yeah, because I'll be honest. How do you make money off of Tumblr? I mean, you get ads. That's about it. There, there's no real monetization past putting ads yeah. on it. What? Yeah, Tumblr Plus. What are you going to give them that they don't already have? Yeah, you, you, Tumblr Plus will take the ads off. That's about it. So this could, speaking of Tumblr, this could come back to Tumblr because Tumblr is losing money right now. It's not turning a profit, not for what it was paid for. And when we say losing money in this sense, it was Yahoo paid, I think, a billion for Tumblr, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sounds about right. They spent a ridiculous amount of, num of money on Tumblr. They did. And when we say it's not turning a profit, doesn't mean it's not making money. It's just not making enough money to justify spending a billion dollars on it. Yeah, you know, because they get a certain amount of bandwidth that they have to pay for to support Tumblr. Yeah. And if they're not bringing that much in, plus whatever it costs for the salaries people maintain and update Tumblr, and whatever other costs there are, you lose money. Yeah, it's and yeah, it was uh, nine hundred and ninety million. So that's close to a billion. Uh, one point one billion, if you include the uh, one hundred and thirteen million in liabilities. Hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's it's not that Tumblr's not bringing in money. It is. It just has to offset the cost that Yahoo paid for it, and it hasn't. Not anywhere near. Not in, not in any near term anyway. And we are in the, the midst of quarterly capitalism, which means if it isn't turning a, a profit by the first quarter after you buy it, it's a failure. Even though it's not, but... Meh. So yeah, this is something to keep an eye on. And if you are a Yahoo user, if you had Yahoo Mail, and I know a lot of ISPs switched people to Yahoo Mail from established servers because it was cheaper. Yahoo would handle all the mail and... And they would get to put their ads on people's in people's faces, and and the ISPs wouldn't have to handle uh, email servers. So they're like, it was a win-win. Well, Yahoo's been scanning your emails, whether you did anything wrong or not. It's just been scanning all of them. It's been looking at all of them. Obviously, it's got to, has to have collected records of them, copies of them. We don't know, but it's been looking. They've been looking at your emails. Yep. We. I wonder if you want to keep using Yahoo Mail after that. I wouldn't. So, that's where we are at the news this week. God damn. A clusterfuck. Yep. What just a giant big old bunch of clusters. All right, let's let's look let's get to the questions now. Um sure. If you have questions for us, tech issues you think we might be able to handle for you, send those to requests at radio.air.com. Put them in the uh Put tech Q&A in the subject line so we know what's going on. All right. Uh, which one do I want to start with? Uh, let's start with George's question because... <laughs> buddy. Oh, my friend George. It's it's the third one down. Okay. Yeah, found it. <laughs> George. <laughs> I haven't even read it yet. I'm already laughing. I'm not laughing at you, man. George, if you're watching, I promise I'm not laughing at you, man. All right. This George sends us this question. Hello, Nash and Mike. Earlier this year, I helped my girlfriend build her first computer. To say it's been a hassle would be a massive undersell. I've gone through three hard drives in six months, all of them coming to the click of death. Now, that's already sounding kind of bad. That's like, well, shit. Do you have a bad manufacturer? Was there a bad batch? Then we get to the next line of George's email. I think I've narrowed the cause of the problem to a vigorous spin cycle in our washing machine. Various cables also became disconnected. Okay. First, how close is your washing machine to the computer? <laughs> It's close enough to be locking, to be knocking cables off inside the computer. <laughs> because I, I, I had an off-site uh, <laughs> uh, place I supported. 
that lost a number of hard drives to vibration as well. But in their case, it was because they were, I don't know, 200 yards from the beach, and between them and the beach, a water treatment plant was being faci- uh, facility was being built, and they're driving these massive steel pilings into the ground to keep the ground from subsiding when they dug a hole. And so it's oh. still piling me, and so losing hard drives left and right. Um, first step I would say is move the computer a little yeah. further away from the, the washing machine because vibration. It, 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 you're going to be distance based with a with a, a washer. You shouldn't be getting that sort of thing if you're in the next room. But okay, move it as far away as you can. Yeah, that that and, that is that is what's. All right, uh, the inside of, a, of an old style hard drive, not a solid state drive. If you've seen solid state drive, that would not be having a problem here. But a hard drive, what's inside of it is a stack of magnetic discs on a platter, just like an old record player. They spin, and uh, like a record arm, there is an arm with a magnetic reader on the end, and it goes over. Back and forth, it has it moves up and down, back and forth across the surface of the disc to read information. There's a motor in there. There's a couple of different motors and and uh, moving parts inside of it. And when these things vibrate, they're not built for it. They are not. Yeah. They are not designed to withstand heavy vibration. However, oh, part of that also depends on the directionality of the vibration. Yeah. But that's not something you're going to be wanting to necessarily mess with. It can get really screwy. Um, things you can, if, if you cannot move it further, um, do you think a a foam rubber base would help? Nope. I, I wouldn't nope. trust it at this point. It's, if, it's, if it's that close to the washing machine that it's knocking cables loose as well, you can't keep it there, George. I, I I don't know what your setup is like. I don't know what your space abilities are like, but you just you shouldn't keep it there because it's already causing three hard drives. That's expensive, man. Yeah, that's expensive. I I wouldn't. Uh, you're you're pretty much. If you're determined to keep it there, I would switch from hard drives to solid state drives, and even then, I wouldn't feel comfy about it. Yeah, and someone's asking with vibrations from a desk fan mess with the hard drive. No. Vibrations from a desk fan shouldn't mess with the hard drive. If the, really. if the fan is shorting out, you would more likely get EM issues. Yeah, but not uh, vibrations. More likely affecting your speakers than your hard drive, but... Yeah. Not, not, oh, I'm sorry to laugh, George, but that's just one of yeah. those... <laughs> I would I would go SSD. I would seriously go SSD if you cannot move now, the his... computer. I'd say at least 20 to... to if, if, if you're a person in the channel who said it's 15 feet away, if you can't go at least 20 to 25 feet away, which will help tremendously. Yeah. Um, the other thing to check is uh, and, uh, see if your washer has a, a lower spin cycle setting. Don't put it on spin max. Um, yeah. Um, well, he has, he has another part of this question. This might be a little, uh, I, I feel bad about this because I think I know what happened. Uh, he says, also a month ago, we had a power knocked out by a storm three times in an hour. This caused a new problem. The fans, lights, and hard drive starting up, and the lights and the hard drive suddenly stop, and the fans slow to a stop, all with no posts or beeps. I replaced the power supply in the motherboard, tried the RAM in a different computer, so I guess the next step is replacing the graphics card. Am I on the right track, or is it something I'm overlooking? Yes, there is the processor. Yeah, yeah, processor could well be it. Yeah, that 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 sounds like I, I with with a graphics. If you have a graphics card not powering up, you will get a beep inevitably, because um, the way a system is set up, and, and this might help some of you who have ever had computer problems. Whenever you t- turn on a normal computer, normal desktop system, not a laptop, but a desktop. You'll normally notice that all the things will power up for a second. Before the screens even come on, you'll hear a little beep. That is called the power on self-test or post. What that single beep indicates is it all is, is well. Right. Yeah. All is good. It is checked. All of the is gone through CPU, uh, RAM, hard well, not hard, doesn't check hard drives. So CPU, RAM, motherboard, and and uh, graphics. It has checked all of those, and if those are good, it goes to the next step, which is starting up the computer, and you can see stuff on your monitor. Now, if it beeps 
multiple times, depending on the motherboard, you'll have, be able to, you know, you could, if you can find it on your phone, you know, you bring up the motherboard uh, manual, it, you can decipher the beep code that you get to determine what's wrong. Right. Anything. So it, it might beep twice and say, oh, that's graphics card is bad. Anything other than a single beep uh, means there's a problem. It's like two or three beeps will tell you. It, they, it varies between different manufacturers what the codes mean. But yeah, it'd be nice if they were consistent because then yeah. Nash and I'd probably be able to rattle them off. But two or three beeps might mean the RAM isn't reading properly or something else is wrong. But when this happens uh, the, the, in, in the course of, of, of the startup and you're not getting a beep, that uh, sometimes it'll do this for the CPU, but sometimes it won't. And when you don't get a beep, that means that your main CPU might be hosed. And that's what you're going to need to replace. And I'm sorry, because that is one of the more expensive components. Okay, so I'm looking at the Wikipedia article for yeah. Power On Self-Test. Uh -huh. No beep is power supply, system board problem, disconnected CPU, or disconnected speaker. <laughs> Well, considering he was getting a beat before, I don't yes. think it's a speaker. Well, because there's a little little tiny internal speaker that that's what makes that beat. Yeah. And since he's already replaced the motherboard and the power supply, we're, we're, you're looking CPU. Your CPU is likely hosed. I'm sorry. There's 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 no good fix for that. You're going to have to replace the CPU. I'm sorry. This is such an expensive replacement for you, George. Now, hang on. That's uh, by the way. That's the original I am uh, IBM post beep codes. Yeah. Um, a, uh, AMI bias doesn't seem like it has zero beeps. Um, yeah. But I would I would say CPU. I would agree with Nash here. CPU is probably your case. Because graphics will get it. Normally, graphics get a beep. And it's like, ee, ee, ee. It's, I, I, mine have always been three long beeps means graphics. Yeah, uh, if it's AMI bias, let's see here. Graphics is... Uh, da, 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 da. I don't see that one. Ah, no, no, I mean. Well, you get the idea, but you know, uh, oh, display memory error is uh, probably graphics. Yeah. yeah, system video adapter is eight beeps. Yeah, it's a long, loud, nasty motherfucker. So, you know, so it, it, it tells you. So, yeah, I'm sorry to say it, George. It's it's likely since you've already done the motherboard and and uh, process and, and power supply, your processor, it's either now you might not you might be in good shape here, but caveat on that, um, you could potentially see, considering you've had this issues with the washing machine, maybe it's got come unseated. Yeah, it could be that the, the CPU is just unseated. You need to resocket it and you check your thermal cooling connection yeah. on it while you're there. Um, and like I said, move this sucker away from the. the um, and, and in the future, I would look at the, if, if this kind of thing happened. I would look at getting a, a more hardcore um, power uh, power uh, protector, surge protector. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so in in the power in the power strip, because that's what you're looking at here. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the power strips. There's there's multiple kinds. There's the cheap twenty dollar ones you can buy. That they say they have a warranty on the gear you plug into them, but then you discover if you ever try to get it, they either disappeared as a company or there's so many qualifications yeah. on what you must do to prove that you didn't fry your own equipment that it's not worth going through. Yeah. And then you get up to the stuff like the 100 to 150 or more stuff that is over in the AV center uh, of your, of your uh, fries or Best Buy or whatever. And they go, and these are the ones that are really, really good. And they're a little bit better on getting refunds if something does happen because they've spent the money. Now, that said, if it says Monster Power Strip on it, just don't get it. Fuck Monster. Monster is overpriced the, the, the brand, the brand is The brand is overpriced. Look for other brands. Like I say, do your, do, your, do your checking. One thing to check is Newegg. They have yeah. their reputation system is pretty good as to what is good equipment and what isn't. And there'll be user comments... Yeah. saying not only how good it is but if they had if users had to get refunds 
from the manufacturer due to you know voltage coming through and frying their equipment, they'll say how easy it was to go through that process. I would certainly look for something at least in the $50 range minimum for a power strip. I don't plug my stuff in anything cheaper than that just because I can afford it and I, I, I really don't. It's easier for me to replace a power strip that, that died to protect my equipment than to replace my equipment. Yeah. Um, all not right. The most, not the most expensive power, uh, power strip uh, uh, surge protector I've ever worked with. That was a $1 million surge protector. <laughs> I'm not like joking. That. Uh, you you can't you can't get it. It's U.S. Navy only. Let's uh let's move <laughs> on to Angie's question because this this one might be something we could help with. Um, sure. Hi Nash, Mike, and Grady. Grady, Grady, she says hi. Did, did did Grady find his meat stick yet? Yeah, he did, but he's asleep now. Um, Angie says I have two bricks that I want to see if I can salvage. My bricks, she means laptops, I think. Both are Acer computers. When I took them to uh, Staples, I was told the motherboards were shot. They will not come on. That was before I took them to Staples, but I was wondering if I could save the data on them and maybe transfer it to a new computer. I'm a plug and play person with a very basic understanding of computers. I'll give you a hint. I learned to program computers and they use punch cards and tape. And one of the computers I'm trying to salvage is a floppy drive. Ooh, these may be desktops. Um, is there any hope? Thanks, yeah, absolutely. Angie. Absolutely there's hope because the data you want on there is gonna be on your hard drives. Now, Considering so, one of them has a floppy, I think. Our, well, hang on. This, this, to me, this is is very straightforward because I deal with this at work. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is you want to go to your local equivalent of Best Buy or Fries, or if you don't have one of those, or if they don't have what I'm about to describe, go to Newegg. And what you're looking for, because obviously you have a different computer, you're going to be plugging these things into. Mm -hmm. What you're looking for is a USB to IDE adapter. I have got the thing on the screen. I'll show you what we're talking about. I prefer these, these docks. Um, yeah, and I, I use cables just because it's easier for me to carry around. Um, this is an example. Not necessarily this model, but this is an example of one. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, a dock. And considering you're mentioning one of these desktops has a floppy drive on it, I'm going to assume these are older which means they may Ribbon not cable. be yeah they may not be SATA hard drives they may be IDE hard drives in which case whatever type you get whatever type you're looking for is one that has IDE in it now I picked this one because it does SATA and IDE so you'll be covered whichever type of hard drive happens to be in those computers now with this dock it's really straightforward you plug the you just plug the hard drive in if you buy the cable version, you basically just plug the cables in. It's pretty straight where you sit the hard drive on your desk. You've unscrewed it from your old computer, you set it in the desk, you plug in your data cable, your power cable, and you're good. Yeah, essentially what these do is they turn your any hard drive into a USB drive. And they work with Windows just like a USB drive. You plug it in and suddenly a little window comes up and lists everything that's on there. So it's it, they're fairly cheap. This one that I'm looking at right now is $40. I buy about one of the sets. Like I say, I use the cable sets mm -hmm. where it's a it's USB cable plug on one end, and it's an IDE connector on the other end. And mm -hmm. the one I one I buy actually has two different styles of IDE connectors, one on each side, and then a SATA plug coming out the top of it, so I can handle just about anything, uh, except really screwy laptop hard drives because they often have proprietary adapters. Those are good for portability. Yeah, I, and I, I like these. I, I buy these. Well, the reason I buy those is because mm -hmm. they're about fifteen to twenty dollars each. Mm -hmm. So when one of my coworkers borrows it, says, "Hey, I, need, I have an old hard drive," and then they never return it, you're only out fifteen to twenty. I don't feel like I'm out too much. I know it's in the building somewhere, and I'll track them down eventually. I, I personally like these mainly just because of the sake of they're as simple as to work as, as an old Nintendo or Atari. You just plug yeah. it in like it's a cartridge and boom, Bob's your uncle. You're all set it is, effect, it is effectively a hard drive toaster. Hard drive toaster, yeah. Um, that will, but now what you will have now, to do is... That won't that will work for, for a floppy drive. However, again, Newegg will, sell, will gladly sell you a USB floppy drive. Yeah. And that is probably your best solution there. It's easier than trying to adapt your old floppy drive out of your old computer. And again, yeah. this is what I do at work. I have a USB floppy drive for the simple reason that about once every six months, 
a brand, a, a coworker, not a brand new coworker, someone who's been here years will go, do you have something that can read floppy drives? My legacy files are on this, and they'll hold up a stack of floppies or a box of floppies. Or they'll go, I have one file I need off this disk. How do you know it's on that disk? Well, because I wrote the name of the file on the disk. Good. And I'll loan that out. And that I will beat them up over because I only have one of those and they're a little bit, little bit, little bit pricier. But again, we're talking around $30 here. Now, the, the, the only, um, the only thing you're going to have to know is you are going to have to take the cases apart to get at these drives. That's the yeah, bad. News. That's, that's simple screwdriver work. That's right. pretty straight. The good news is all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver to be able to get the hard drives out of the old com computers and just plug them into this and you'll be able to access the, the information on them. So you should uh, be Important thing to note after you've taken, you know, because it'll likely be held in by four screws, mm -hmm. either from the bottom, depending on the case configuration, yeah. or two screws on each side. Yeah. And that, you know, you'll, you'll have to pull off two panels if it's that. Yeah. Uh, and then just don't drop the hard drive. Yeah, don't drop the hard drive. We got a lot of hard drive questions this week. Uh, let's, let's do Colleen's question. Okay. Oh, this is we're gonna have to give you bad news this one. Uh, it's the first one. Um, hey, Nash and Mike, huge fan, and hoping you can help me out with this. I have a Western Digital My Passport Ultra two terabyte external USB drive. When I plug it into Windows 10 computer, the computer does both does and does not acknowledge that I've plugged it in. Under the device manager, it shows up as connected. But if I try to get at the files stored on my drive through File Explorer, it does not show up there. I don't know what caused this. I had several. I had stopped using the drive for a long time while I was working. A period of several months is no use. I tried to use it, and suddenly it's not working anymore. Changed out the cable. Tried it for Windows 7, Linux, other things. I do have some data on the non-functioning drive. I would like to save it if at all possible. If not, is there some other way to get the drive to be usable going forward? Even if it means losing the data, I'd be okay with it at this point. Is this drive in any way salvageable? Well, Colleen's, no. Okay, I'm going to say with one possible exception. Hmm. Western Digital uses the name My Passport the same way Samsung uses Galaxy Note. It's been their name of their drives. So there's a whole series of My Passport drives. Some of them, the older ones, uh, had had the requirement they needed external power. That was, I think, just the original series. So if this is a drive that uses external power, uh, then you have a chance. And the reason you have a chance is because those older uh, USB drives are just IDE drives with an IDE to USB conversion card built into it that you then just plug usb and power into now uh if you if but if you go to if you go to amazon right now if you go if you type or excuse me if you just do a google search on wd my passport ultra external hard drive and you see thing that looks like it takes usb 3 or whatever if it just is a regular uh hang on a second if it's a regular usb connection like like that or the double wide one, mm -hmm. then you're out of luck. If it is a, uh, the what do they call the, the big D, the square, sort of USB square USB-B. Yes, if it's that, you might be in luck because you'll be able to disassemble the drive and plug it in because you'll be able to bypass the converter card by using one of those USB to IDE controllers. Yeah. Again, something I do at work. Probably not your case though, if it's a anything over the first or second generation of the and i'd say two terabyte two terabyte that's fairly new that's newer that probably is newer so you're, you're likely out of luck what is likely happened with that drive is some way shape or form the usb connector inside the drive has gotten damaged it's either not talking to the drive part of the drive anymore or one of the pins has gotten disconnected or something so it's no longer able to talk you may be able to open it up and get the drive unplug the drive from the ins that's going to mean tearing it to pieces but you may be able to do this you could try that that there is a chance find any screw holes on it disassemble it and pull out the, the if, if it's built in, in the proper way there may just be 
a hard drive inside there that you could pull out and you like we talked about in the previous story get one of the like mike said get one of those little cable adapters or get one of those docks and and it does look like you can tear it down there's tear down videos online yeah uh i don't just from the picture the picture i have looking at here is not spectacular so finding adapters may be a little trickier but it looks like it could be done now but my, and the, and this is all a matter of what's gone wrong with it if what's gone wrong is like mike said and the USB to IDE adapter part of it is busted, the part that allows the hard drive to communicate with your computer through the USB cable. If that's busted, you may be in luck. If it's the drive itself that's having issues, if there's, there's some sort of magnetic issue, if there's some sort of physical damage on it, you might not be able to do anything with it. Yeah. There's there's an iFixit article out there that says, you know, that might give you some help um, for uh, my digital passport repair. Uh, and that, it, it does say USB 3 on there. So take a shot. Right now, you don't have your data. The worst thing that's going to happen if you go through this is you won't have your data. Yeah. So And you might have a little bit of fun uh, tearing it apart. Yay! Worst case. Worst case, at the end of it, you're frustrated and you, you can't do it. You can yeah, you can have a little bit of fun and stress relief by taking a hammer to it. Yay! Hammer, yay! Hey, I, I, I take a hammer to a hard drive about once a quarter. Yay! Oh, I think I think that I, I think that's actually going to wrap it up for us. Now we're running a little bit late. Um, okay. But yeah, I hope that helps. And George. George, you gotta move the computer. I'm still thinking about the computer next to the washing machine. <laughs> that's gonna keep you going for a while, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, George, bless your heart, man. I'm sorry, but goddamn, man. <laughs> oh, all right. Well. Folks, for those of you, uh, if you have questions for next time, we'll be, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, go ahead and send those to requests at radio.air.com. We'll endeavor to answer those tech questions for you. Uh, in the meanwhile, um, for Mike and myself, we'll see you back here next time. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>